So seeing as I got Echo Show Day off, I thought I'd catch up in some scanning that I haven't done. So when I was over in South Brisbane doing shiploaders and whatnot, I worked with a guy that has a 3D Sense 3D scanner. So I've asked him to borrow it, and I've had to buy a new laptop just to drive it. So I've got one of these Dell Latitude thingies just to run this program. But I'm going to try and scan an RV sump today. Um, you probably see it. it used to be an S13 with a um, sway bar rubbed on it. So I want to do an extended sump with the front portion back a bit and tie into this flat face. Um, the scanner doesn't seem to like to scan black surfaces so I've just painted the bit that I want to scan silver hopefully then it just tries to find um, a bit more of a reference on it to make the 3D model for me. The scanner itself is quite simple um, basically it just takes a whole heap of images with these little flashy lights down here and it pieces it together to make like a point cloud image. Uh, it just plugs into a laptop with a USB and then you just have this 3D sense uh, 3D systems 3D systems, 3D sense uh, program to run it. So what you're gonna do when you start is just, just gotta hold it steady, see all this white, it just means I'm too close to the object. So you're gonna come out far enough away where it's all like that shady white on the outside. And then we just gotta come over here and hit scan. It gives us this countdown. And the uh, pastel blue, it's bits where it's got data. Yeah, it likes to do that a lot. So you just keep moving around, trying to keep capturing more and more data. Um, it likes to drop out all the time. I'm not really comfortable with how slow you got to move with it, but we'll give it a whirl. Down the side seems to be building the data pretty quick. Keeps losing tracking all the time and just gotta keep going back to somewhere where it knows where it is. I think because it's a flat surface and it just doesn't like it. Possibly rooted it right now. We just, oh, no, it's come back. It doesn't like that back face, so see if we can get to the other side without. There we go. Just gotta get this last side. And then we can see what sort of data it generates for us. Should be alright on the sump this side, it's a flat side. Uh, just keep zooming it around, trying to collect all the last bits, bits that we might need. Nope, lost tracking again. Oh, we're back. Try 
try and get around the front. So it's, because it's handheld, it's a bit wobbly on your hand. Let's see what it does. So it's going to create a 3D model for us from all the scans. Now it's applying colour. So far the scanner's not been too bad. It's got a few different settings in it. You can do it so it can set it so it scans an object, which is what I'm doing, or you can get it to have a much larger window and it's can scan a person. So that's what it's created for us. Just work out where the mouse went. It's not too bad. You can see where the spray bar was rubbing. It's all dented across here. So we'll just have to remember to put that plane a bit further back on the new piece that we weld in. Get a bit more sway bar clearance for RBS 13s. It's definitely something we can work with. Right, so now I got it in Inventor. Usually comes in some horrible black colour, but I've changed it to this blue, turned the mesh on so you can see all the faces that it's sort of tried to generate to um, make it into 3D. Uh, it's not too bad, but we'll see if we can measure anything off it. And, uh, try and draw a new one. So let's just try and draw something to try and get a gauge of how big it's going to be. Start off the face, do the bottom, down's a good way, and then do another face, make it come out, Oop. make it come out, switch it so the arrow is coming out, and then we'll get it to put a fold on this edge, so now you can see that that's going to be folded. And then do the same on the top, it's coming up, and then we'll fold it off this edge. And we'll do the same on this side, it's coming out, and we'll fold it off that edge. And then that one's going down, so we'll flip it so it's coming up and on the inside edge right. Right. and then we're going to do the front and the back so the front make it come out and we're going to fold it on the inside edge and the back and it's going out which is good and then we're going to fold it on the inside edge so just a quick dumb mock up of our extended part. The beauty about doing it sheet metal is we can just go create flat pattern and it does some thinking. It basically so it tells us that's what we need to get laser cut and these yellow lines, I don't know if you can see them, but these yellow lines are our fold lines and it even tells us what angle to fold them at. So go back to folded part, save, we'll go create a new assembly now. And then we can place in our sub extension, which is that thing. 
And then we can go place in our sump scan, which is that thing. So, properties. We'll get this thing to sit zero 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 and ground it so when we can move our folded part around but then we can't move our scan so it's stuck there which is good so that's the front there we'll just free rotate this DB around and drag him Look at it front on. So I'm going to try and line this DB thing up. Try and bring it down to this ledge here. So bring him down to that ledge there. can see it's on the piss so I'm going to try and rotate it around some more just by eye uh, unfortunately without it being converted to a solid I can't really constrain to it kind of looks parallel Kinda of doesn't look parallel. See, so we gotta make our opening bigger. Now length is too long. It's roughly the front there. So just now we'll ground it here. That way we can't drag either of them. If I make this transparent, then we can at least see through it to see where we're going wrong. So you can see that our edge and that edge is not aligned properly. So unground that. Slap him. And then do part rotate. Oh, I won't let me do it when it's transparent. Change it to wireframe. There we go, that's a bit easier to see where we're at. Kind of looks right that way. Kind of doesn't look right that way if you line it up. We've got to rotate it over a bit more. Other way, mate. Kind of like that. Out there. Now we can ground it again and take a few more guesses at it. So let's make it 200, not 300. Hit update. And then Make that 50 mil. Let's make that a bit bigger, also. Let's go look at it in here. Turn it back to shaded with edges.
it's now too short. Where is it? But yeah, you can see that much easier it is to have a guess at things in 3D when you have it in 3D compared to not having it in 3D. I'll tweak it a bit more and I'll um, show you the end product. Right, so I kind of ended up redrawing it because I had a better idea. But anyway, this is where I'm at with it. So, got the edges to line up, cutting the back out. So then it should just slip over the outside shell and then you can scribe the line where to cut the sump. I'm gonna have a look at getting this front part off because that's where my sway bar rubbed. And then run a full face down and a full face on the bottom. And then we'll just cut through here. And then we can grind this edge back as needed. Grind this edge back as needed. Weld all around here, weld all these seams up. Down there, around the back, corner to corner everywhere. And then all these are folds, so no welds. So then it's just pretty much going to be weld around the corner and wherever it connects to the sump. And then I get my sway bar clearance in the front. Not 100% sure on uh, how much extra capacity is. But I am um, not overly phased about that at the moment. Uh, as long as it's not crazy. Uh, I've got to try and work out where the, where the pickup actually is. And then I can try and do a, a gated trapdoor setup for it. Um, and then just do like a tab and slot design so I can laser cut four holes in the bottom plate. And just have this um, four sides male tabs on one side and female slots on the other and male tabs on the bottom they just all sort of clips together uh, and then put their little hinges on for the trap door and it just all sits in, no measuring then and you can just weld it all out but I decided to redraw it to put these slopes in the wings try and uh, get all the oil to drain back towards the pickup I don't think there's much point of having an extended part if all the oil sits in the extended parts and away from the pickup. Um, and then you're trying to run the slope top to in case there is splashing. Uh, stop any air from being aerated in the edges by letting it drain up to the top. Um, and then I'm thinking I'll just put the sump plug on the front here. And Putting it on the bottom would still be a bit risky. It's going to sit 10 mil lower than the original one. Um, then obviously I can put some big dash 10 fittings in this side for the catch can return. And obviously on this side, which will be the turbo side, it'll have um, the drain already ready in the block. But uh, it's going for right. Try to preempt as much as possible to make it easier for myself. You can see I've cut the back out, and then hopefully it's just a little tap tap and get the edges to line up, like, and then a uh, nice simple weld job. Um, sort of playing with the idea of putting a separation plate in both sides of the wings, just trying to make it harder for the oil to s slosh away from the pickup just be like a plate with a series of laser cut holes in it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I might get this cut first so I can work out where the rest of it goes and then just continue on with it.